So I'd like to, before I uh, begin, I uh, well, first want to thank Hayley for such a fabulous presentation, very, very thought-provoking. Um, I would also, and I think my presentation will come up in just a moment. There it is, fabulous. All right. Now, I also was supposed to have a partner in crime, but Julia unfortunately is unwell, so not able to be here. Um, hopefully I'll do her justice. So I would also like to acknowledge the um, that we're meeting on the on the land of the Wadjuk people and people. I'd like to acknowledge them as orig original and ongoing custodians of this land and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging and any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people present here today. So I'm from Palliative Care WA. As Laura said, my role is community education. We're the, not, we're, we're the peak body, we don't do direct service delivery but I, I'm really pleased to be having the opportunity for community education. As well, a bit like Hayley, I wear different hats. So my, my work hat is, is community education, but I also have a personal and family interest in certainly both in caring and in palliative care and in advanced care planning. So my mum died of advanced dementia about six, six months ago and she was in um, aged care for the last 12 months. We weren't able to care for her at home. Um, and even though she, we had had conversations about what was important to her in that last stage of life, and we did have some things in writing, we did still face decisions as a family uh, that were difficult to, to really nut out what, what do we think mum would want. So I have a real personal passion for these conversations. Um, and I am still providing care to another family member uh, with a life limiting condition. So my heart goes out to all of you who are carers and, and thank you all for the amazing work that you do. Uh, this presentation, in some ways, hopefully will give a bit of, um, uh, Hayley in her presentation raised so many challenges that carers are facing, quite rightly so. I'm really pleased that we can provide not necessarily an answer to those, but hopefully a couple of services that can provide some support for carers. So I really do hope that some of you find these helpful. So we're talking about advanced care planning, which is thinking about your financial, health and personal wishes for the last stage of your life. Why is that important? Can't we just leave that to the doctors? That's often what we've done is kind of just say, well, the doctors will kind of sort things. Let's have a look within medicine. If I was to say to you, well, what's the priority for Western medicine? What is their goal? Their goal is generally keeping us alive for as long as we can. And they do an amazing job. I'm enormously thankful for, you know, I'm, I'm sure each of us is, um, is able to, to name probably quite a few ways we've benefit, benefited from Western medicine. And, and we have been able to extend life. But unfortunately, sometimes that does come at the expense of quality of life. And if we ask Australians what they want, it's not always to live for as long as possible, regardless of the circumstances. If we actually do speak to Australians, as, as people have done, um, such as Mill et al., they say, well, actually, it's important for me to have dignity in the last stage of my life. I want to be comfortable and avoid pain and suffering, and I want to have a voice at, at that time. Now, those things don't, so that kind of commitment to or interest in quality of life doesn't necessarily fit with quantity, which is what Western medicine offers us. So there's a bit of a clash. And so what we then see is that in the last stage of life, people often have poor health, chronic illness. We know that often up to 50% of us won't be able to make or communicate our decisions at the last stage of life. They'll often have more hospitalizations than they wanted and unwanted and intrusive and intensive and expensive medical procedures. So it's not the outcome we want. So what can we do? That's where advanced care planning comes in. We can't have, we can't facilitate person-centered care unless we know what a person's wishes are in that last stage of their life. And as I said before, almost half of people at the end of their life won't be able to make or communicate their wishes for themselves. So this is where advanced care planning comes in. So this is a WA model of advanced care planning. The person is at the center, and or depending on your family culture, it might be the family at the centre, but um, then there's four aspects around that. Having a think about what matters to you and what's going to become a priority in that last stage of life. Having conversations is so very important. 
uh, if you're lucky enough to have loved ones around you or if not to GPs or other carers. Putting stuff in writing can make a really big difference and there's a, a range of documents you can use. And of course, sharing those wishes. There's no point kind of filling out some documents and tucking them in the, the, the nightstand and no one knows where they are. Who's advanced care planning for? Is for anyone regardless of age and stage. I was running an advanced care planning workshop in Bunbury and I was in the Southwest for a few days. So a friend came with me and puppy came with me. And at the end of the workshop, I got a text from my friend say, pick us up at the vet. I'm like, oh, this doesn't sound good. Got to the vet, turned out puppy had come across a snake. The snake had reared up, struck at puppy and went to strike a second time. My friend leaned towards the striking snake to pull the puppy out of the way. It could have been anyone's last moment. So there they were healthy, you know, going life is fine. You just never know. So everyone can do advanced care planning. And even if someone has demission, diminished decision-making capacity, then it is still possible to work with them to identify their wishes or to think through what do I think my loved one would want and to do an advanced care plan for them. So advanced care planning is absolutely for everyone. What are some of the benefits of advanced care planning? Well, hopefully then you will have your wishes or, or be more likely to have your wishes at the last stage of life. You won't have those hospitalizations you don't want. So for my mum with advanced dementia, once things really had progressed, we knew that she would not at that point want her life to be prolonged. So we had conversations and we, we spoke to the care, the aged care place and we said, look, if mum falls ill, she wouldn't want to go to hospital at this stage. She wouldn't want intensive interventions. She wouldn't want, for example, if she had, she wouldn't want her life to be prolonged. So if she had um, an infection, uh, we ask that you don't provide her with antibiotics. Comfort care, of course, make her comfortable. Within a week of having that conversation, mum did fall ill. The doctor wasn't able to come to the aged care place. Dad couldn't get hold of me. Thankfully, the manager was there. She was able to have a conversation with dad and say, we can look after your wife here. We can keep her comfortable here. And that's exactly what happened. So those conversations are so very important. And of course, reduce stress and anxiety and depression in, in surviving loved ones. Because that is, as you as carers know, it is such a burden of care and if you can imagine trying to provide that care when you don't know what your loved one wants can be a massive strain. But if you have had conversations and ideally put some things in writing, that takes a lot of the decision-making burden off, really reduces the stress. Oh, I jumped over a slide. Oh. And uh, as I say, the advanced care planning, Often in the caring role, um, you're only focused or you're primarily focused on your loved one, which is, a, which is a beautiful thing. But advanced care planning is important for you because if you suddenly take ill, there mightn't be anyone to speak for you. Um, so doing that planning is something that's helpful for you, but also helpful for your broader family as well. So I'm hoping that some of you are feeling inspired to do some advanced care planning and maybe you don't know where to start and this is where uh, hopefully we can help you. We have a range of different things. First is we have workshops. We have face-to-face -face workshops and online workshops. They've been proven to be highly effective and we've had really, we get really positive feedback from participants. These workshops run all around um, metropolitan Perth as well as regional Western Australia. And if you jump on our website, you can see the range of, um, of, of workshops available, or you can call our line to get that information. We also have a palliative care helpline. So this provides information about anything to do with end of life, anything to do with palliative care, and also anything to do with advanced care planning. And this, pal this helpline is for you, for community members, but also for staff are welcome to call that number. And you can call that number from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. every single day of the year, including Easter, including Christmas, which is coming up pretty close. So do keep the helpline in mind. It's staffed mostly by palliative care nurses, so people ha have really solid experience in the area. We also, and I'm super excited to let you know about this, we also have an advanced care planning support service. And this is provided in conjunction with um, Carers WA. So Carers WA have provided uh, funding for this service. And it, we call it the Julia option. So Julia is, is one of our wonderful team members and she'll come into your home or meet you in a community um, setting or come to the workplace 
or talk to you by phone or by Zoom, totally free service to help you with your advanced care planning. So she can facilitate uh, family conversations and she's facilitated some challenging conversations over time. Um, and she can also help you with the documentation. She can come into the hospital, she can come into aged care, wherever you are, she can help you. And she doesn't have an agenda. Her agenda is to support you to do the advanced care planning you want to do. Totally free service, very, very exciting. So we've got a brief, ah, now, is that gonna play? Do you have a video there? Oh yes, excellent. Hashtag winning. So this video was made uh, only just super recently, within weeks. So this is someone who's accessed um, both the workshop and Julia's service. My name's Annette Buchanan. My husband Ian and I did an advanced health care plan. Um, Ian has since passed away, but that having that um, advanced health care plan available to us and since then I have done mine um, and I think that it's a very important document that everyone should complete. I first found out about the service when I was doing a search online uh, to find out about palliative care. And there was a link to a seminar, which we both attended. And by the time we got to do the advanced care directive, Ian had gone back into hospital. So the officer then offered to come to the hospital and do the advanced health care directive in the hospital, um, which made it much easier. And we focused on Ian that day and the officer talked us through it and explained how you needed to put it in both medical and legal language so that it was appropriate. In terms of Ian, he was ill and had been ill for some time. So we had a pretty good idea of what was going to happen. And it made it very easy in terms of family because we knew there would be no doubt about what he wanted. Um, from my point of view, um, I've got decisions to make about my life and having that in place has made it easier in terms of the boys knowing what I want. Ian was in and out of hospital quite a lot and at the beginning of May, he had a relapse and we rushed him to emergency at Fiona Stanley Hospital and he subsequently deteriorated rapidly and there was a code blue and all the doctors came and I had grabbed the advanced health care directive as we raced out the door. I showed it to the doctors and said, do you need to read this? Um, these are Anne's wishes. And the doctor had a quick look through it and said, nothing that we're going to be doing now will, um, we won't go against any of Anne's wishes in this. Things got worse, he deteriorated, and so we brought him home uh, to pour his last days. Towards the end of that period, at first he was, he was able to communicate with us, uh, but then later it got worse and he was um, getting more and more ill. And so we were able to use that advanced healthcare directive to stress to the doctors that these were Ian's wishes and that he wanted to die with dignity. Um, and so we were very, very clear about A, what he wanted, and we could also communicate with um, medical people 
about this is what Ian wanted. And so ultimately, they respected that and we were able to be with him and he passed peacefully, surrounded by his family, exactly as he would have wanted to be. But I didn't actually know him until he got ill and watched the way he, he handled that. Knowing that Anne had expressed very clearly what he wanted often was very important for me because we had to make some very split second decisions at times and I had to be able to communicate those to family um, and it was made easier because it was on paper and so we could speak to the doctors and say this is what he wanted. I could say to family this is what dad wanted. I think it's really important for anyone and it's a bit like when you say about making the most of life Ian and I were constantly saying to people who said oh we'll go off and have a holiday next year we'd say if you're going to do it do it today because you might not have tomorrow and I think that's the same with that sort of planning it needs to be done sooner rather than later because you might not have later it makes me feel very secure in the fact that everybody knows what I want and so it's not going to cause division between the people that love me. Um, and so I can then go on and do the silly things that I want to do, secure in the knowledge that um, people know what I want to happen if, if the worst happens. So we have the so we have the workshops, we have the Julie option, a wonderful support service, we have our helpline. Uh, thanks very much to the End of Life Care Program, Department of Health and Carers WA. Thank you so much for your attention. We do have a few minutes now for questions, so I'd be delighted to take any questions that you have. Yeah, uh, yes, and then there. Oh, and there, oh, oh, oh there's a roving microphone that'll thank come you. Here. Yes. Um, I'll share first, uh, it was only yesterday <laughs> in ED down at Fiona's with my mum with the de dementia and she's not well. And they said, oh, we're going to transfer her to another hospital and um, so it'll just be ward care, won't it? It won't be ICU, won't be. And I just said, it's DNR. And he went, great, <laughs> walked off. So uh, sometimes doctors forget what it means. Um, I've written now three advanced care planning directives. Um, all three parties aren't interested in being involved. They don't want to know, they don't want to talk about it, they just want me to do it. I have guardianship so I have a responsibility to make sure I can do it. How do you engage people who aren't interested? Oh, that's a million dollar question, isn't it? Uh, um. I mean, that, that might be one for Julia or for, for a longer, but in the, sh the short term, I, I guess I would probably start by saying, um, is this, I'd say, oh, it sounds like you're not interested. Are you telling me you're not, you're not interested in, in doing any advanced care planning? Is there absolutely no value in that at all for you? Can you, is there, can you see any value? Um, and that, so I'm taking a step back and giving them space to take a step forward. So I would certainly respectfully engage in conversation and always respect a person's right. Um, we're not able to do advanced care planning for someone who doesn't want to do it. Um, but if they, they want to do it, they know where we are and we can certainly help them. But unfortunately, we can't make people do it. And it is tough because some people choose for a whole range of reasons. It might be just too hard or they want to just keep living their life. So that is a that is a tricky, a, a very good question, but a tricky one. Thank you so much. I, I won't continue if that's okay. Just want to give a few other people, but thank you for that excellent question. Then just down the front here. Yes, on this, just a microphone coming. 
Um, how do you deal with um, doctors taking advanced health directive as a ticket to not give you the care and support you need? Um, and that one might be outside of my scope. Um, what I can say is that the advanced health directive is, we, um, and I have a technical term, very legal, is a very legal document and doctors are duty bound to follow that. So they are absolutely required to be following what's in that advanced health directive. N now, clearly in, in every circumstance, th th there can be times when people don't do that and I, I can't speak to that. Advanced care planning is no panacea. It's no guarantee. It's no kind of you will get exactly what you want or things will go abs I can't promise that to anyone. But what I can say is it will it will absolutely massively increase the chances of you having the end of life care and the, the care in the last stage of your life that you will want. I'm sorry, it sounds like you might have had or someone you know might have had quite a difficult experience. And I'm My husband died 27 days ago. Oh, gosh. And the minute they saw the advanced health, health directive, my effort to get help was an uphill battle that I lost. Oh. He's gone. Oh, I would rather hang myself at home than to prepare one of these documents. Oh, I don't have any family. What will happen to me when I go to hospital with one of those documents? I'll be pumped full of morphine. I'm so sorry. I'm just, I'm... A doctor called me an idiot. Is it my skin color that made you think? Of? And my husband's name was Ian too. I'm so sorry. How many Ians are being I'm so not sorry. given I'm so sorry. help and support because there is advanced health directive? I'm so very sorry. I haven't that's heard an, that experience before. That's not a before. ticket. That's not it. okay. No, and that that's not at all our intention. And, and, and I, I'm so sorry for your experience. We were sent home with a bed and a prescription for morphine, oh, saying it is end of life. It wasn't end of life so came because of that document. I'm so sorry for your experience. Yeah. I hope you're able to, to reach out to someone if, if that would help you here. Thank you for sharing. I... I, I can imagine if I was in your position, I, I would be angry and I would be very, very distressed. I can absolutely imagine that. Um, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I, I really don't have any simple answer for you. This is something that o over time that, that for many people has been very helpful for them. And I hear that you've had a very different experience and I'm just... So sorry for that experience. Yeah. I'm so sorry for. I I would like to. I feel like I can't do your your experience justice here. This is a, a a big public space, so I'd be happy to talk with you later. And I do encourage you to speak to me or to speak to someone afterwards. With respect, I would like to give someone else the opportunity to ask a question as well, if that's all right. I'm so sorry. Okay, thank you so much for that. Would yes. Um, maybe it's document or no document because I had a similar experience with my stepfather-in-law. He wasn't that ill, um, but he was in nursing home and he was in hospital. And we, I was sort of personally asked by the doctors, um, listen, what do you want us to do um, if his heart stops mm -hmm. or so? you want us to resuscitate and I said I know I, I really you know sort of don't don't think that I'm in the position to do that it was a really stressful time yes um and that was with or without a, a care thing it would be the same but those doctors for example really um tried to enforce and get me to make a decision and basically one of them told me well if we're at lunch um, sort of, and we got the code blue, we need to know whether we sort of put the sandwich away and run to help or not. So, I mean, sometimes maybe it's just the doctors that are idiots as well. You, um, look, I, I, again, I can't speak to individual experiences. Um, 
and I, I'm, I'm so sorry. It sounds like you, you, you felt very pressured, um, and and I can certainly appreciate that. Um, and and I'm not saying that that how, that that was well handled. It sounded like it wasn't well handled. Um, I, I guess in some ways it, it does speak to to then having something in writing that if 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 your loved one had been able to put something in writing, they wouldn't have had to ask you. It's the doctors without documentation and without guidance from a guardian are duty bound to continue life and to do absolutely everything. What um, I have very occasionally, I did have uh, one person who came to my workshop who said, I'm in this workshop because I want to document in the Advanced Health Directive that I want to live absolutely for as long as possible. I want to do, I want them to fling every treatment at me, regardless of quality of life, I want to keep living. Overwhelmingly, what we mostly hear is the other, is that quality of life is more important and I have bottom lines and I want that to be known, which is the value of the Advanced Health Directive. Um, uh, Just, oh, I think we've yeah. got a, a question here and then we can come to you. So a couple more minutes. So this might be the last question. We might have time or to see. Yeah. Thank you for your presentation. I work in uh, the paediatric sector and I have a specific question around that. Do you offer any specialised training or specialised workshops that are pitched at parents uh, of very young children in the palliative care model? Because uh, I understand that that would look very different than an advanced care plan for someone who has lived a very long life. Do you offer specific training in paediatrics? We we don't at this stage, but come and talk to us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we may be able to direct you or, or consider something. I, I I see there's still more questions. Um, we can maybe take one more. Uh, so there was a question right at the front or a comment. Yeah. National Register that these documents can be lodged them into the own hospital in advanced you know, the, the Very good. So the very good question is where do you lodge these documents? Yeah. Translations when they're actually Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, you can lodge your advanced health directive um, on my health record, you can um, many GP surgeries will help people upload to there. And if if there's someone who who does have a relationship with the hospital, you can take a copy to your hospital and ask them to put it on their hospital records. Um, and as well, we would encourage people to, um, as Annette did, to 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 have a if you can, you know, have the presence of mind and have someone there who can grab it. Look, lots of questions. I I can see this is raised um, really, you know, a whole pile of responses and feelings. I do thank you for sharing all of those. Uh, please do come and see me um, afterwards if you would like to. Please get in touch with us at the Palliative Care Helpline. Please also remember that the helpline is also a place where you can have those conversations and be referred to grief and loss services if needed. And I wish you all so well and thank you so much. Thank you.